guys. Uh, I'm Ray. He's Evan. Hello. Uh, we both work at a little place called Goldfront. It's a creative studio in the Mission, and uh, we basically help brands and different companies find their greatness and tell that story to the world. That's right. And today we, we're going to talk a little bit about how to make brands sound more human. And we're also going to give you like a concrete takeaway that you guys can take with you so that you can do things wherever you are to move things in the right direction. So um, when, when we start thinking about this idea of brands sounding not very human, it kind of makes me think of how I talk to Siri. So when I talk to Siri, I kind of talk like this. Um, Siri, directions to my own house. He, and actually, kinda, he actually does this, too. I kind of talk like a robot, which I think is great, because I'm basically meeting Siri right where she is. You know, If I were a robot like her, I would want someone to talk to me like a robot. But if you're a human being, and you go to a website, and something comes to you that's like very corporate, it's very maybe, maybe it's appealing to the rational side of you only, they kind of talk to you like you're a robot, and there's kind of a misalignment. It's like, does this website think that I'm a corporation? No, I'm a person. So uh, at our studio, we like to try to think of, in order to earn our, the attention and respect of our audience, the first thing we have to do is prove our humanity. And that's where it all starts. And that's, that's when people start listening. Right. And this is all well and good. But if you're at a place of work where there's a lot of corporate speak going on already, kind of like what this kind of looks like to me. <laughs> Um, it, it can be really hard to right the ship and get things going in the right direction. Uh, but we really believe that this starts on an individual level. Um, you have to understand and care for and put your own humanity at the forefront of everything you do every day when you come to work if you are going to s tackle this bigger issue of making brands sound more human. Uh, which brings us to the titular slide in our presentation, uh, the 10-year-old and the professional. Um, Every creative has two sides of themselves, and you can think about them like this, the 10-year-old and the professional. Um, <clears throat> and the way these two sides relate and work together is really key to solving that problem of squashing corporate speak for good. So uh, we're going to talk about the 10-year-old first. So every time that you walk into a meeting, you have this 10-year-old with you. And the 10-year-old is you, except they don't have any of the baggage that comes with being an adult. And they also don't have half as many professional skills. <laughs> this 10-year-old represents your deep voice. It's the emotional stuff that you're scared to share with people on a day-by-day -day basis. It's, um, it, the 10-year-old is the one who gets scared that you think you're going to get fired. They're the ones um, who gets really excited when you're chasing your dreams. They get sad when they feel like people are being mean to you. And they go, they're just over the moon when things are really working well. And some people will wear this 10-year-old on their sleeve. <laughs> and some people will try to hide the 10-year-old. They'll try to tamp it down. And then the worst is when some people don't even know that they have the 10-year-old in the first place. Anybody seen that movie? And that's bad. It's American Psycho if no one's seen that movie. Um, uh, so some people don't think it's there. But he or she is there. And um, the key to doing great creative work, as far as we can tell, is making sure that 10-year-old is served. And very uh, most importantly, that they are being listened to. So uh, let's imagine for a moment that uh, you're starting work tomorrow and you're going in. And it's going to be a really busy day. But you've got your coffee and you've got you know, your little bullshit artisanal donut next to your ergonomic keyboard. And um, you say hi to your team or whatever. It's all smiles. And at this point, the 10-year-old is probably doing pretty good. Granted, it's only 15 minutes into the day, but they're ready to work and create. Uh, but then it happens. Um, you receive an email where someone's not super happy with you. Uh, maybe a deadline got moved up, and now you're really stressed about that. Or you jump into a Slack channel, and there's like 50 new messages, and some of them are really distressed, and maybe you're like, possibly the source of a lot of that stress. Um, and at that moment, the 10-year-old just starts to shut down. And like we've all felt what that feels like. And once, once the 10-year-old starts to shut down, um, it's really hard to turn things back around. But we have basically a trick that we use to kind of get things back on track. And it works pretty much every time. So um, basically, if you take about 20 minutes of your day, and do a simple journal exercise 
you can get back to yourself. And it's not always easy because the 10-year-old has a certain inertia, right? Like when you start shutting down, like everything goes to help. But if you do this journal entry, it will actually help. It's the best thing we know to get back on track with that part of yourself. Now, we're not saying you basically, we're not saying like, okay, go to your computer and be like, um, our designer Ziv is such a dick today, God, even though he might be. <laughs> what we're talking about is like a directed journaling, um, a directed free writing that you can use to work on specific assignments that you have. Right. Um... So, uh, for example, uh, this week at Goldfront, really for the last year, we're working on a new website and a relaunch of our brand. Um, and that's really important. You know, it's the way people see us in the world. It's going to attract business and give people a feeling. Um, so uh, what I did was I sat down and did a directed free write on that. And it's super vulnerable, but I'm going to share it with you all so don't laugh at me. Um, so I'm going to read from this journal entry, and then we'll dissect it. OK, I have to write. This is stupid, this sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's dreary outside. I can see different people coming from the two very different grocery stores down the street from my office, and I wonder about them. I'm supposed to write about Goldfront, what we do that's different, but it's hard to encapsulate. A lot of it is wrapped up in my own hopes and dreams, so maybe that might be why this is a little tough for me. I guard against those dreams jealously. So jealously, they might not ever come true. We want to be the best. I do think that there is something truly great and good that lies behind every person or company worth anything. But stuff always gets in the way. The stress of keeping people hired, putting food on the table, awful election cycle, et cetera, can put people at arm's length from the beautiful things within. Everything we do should help to find that living, breathing, beautiful thing within and help tell it to the world. Find truth and create beauty. That's what we want to do. That's all I ever want to do. And it breaks my heart when I don't. Will I ever make myself proud? This is a struggle. It feels good, but it also hurts my brain. Creativity is a beast in the shadows, but also a goal. And when we hunt each other without mercy, that's when it gets fucking good. <clears throat> nice journal entry, right? Thank you, Evan. So we're going to very quickly break this down. What did he just write? Um, we're going to break this into four different voices. And uh, by the way, we did not come up with the names for these voices. Somebody named Jack Grapes did in a book that he has called Method Writing, which we recommend. So, um, so this first voice is like the I don't know what to write voice, mm. which is a good place to start. I actually cut a lot of that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> there was more self-hate. Yeah. But it's where you got to start. And so this is what we call, this is, um, this is just getting started. And the next voice that you'll see in these writings that you do is the reporting voice. This is where you're just basically saying what's going on in your day, what's around you, what are the things and events around you. And then the next voice is called the analytical voice, where you start to, uh, you start to analyze what you're writing about. And this, you can start to deal with emotions, but you oftentimes will keep those emotions at arm's length. So uh, you're not in the emotions. And then the, the last voice is called deep voice. And this is where the good stuff is. This is the stuff that's vulnerable. It can be overjoyed. It can be really sad. It can be really emotional. It can be super embarrassing. But this is here in the deep voice. This is where you, you get all the best stuff. Right. And um, so this journaling is very useful on its own. I recommend everybody does it just for your brain and your psychology and that person within that wants to get out. It's really nice. But um, also, just in here, I have some stuff that I can use for the branding exercise. Um, you'll notice that when the voice gets like super deep over here, um, I start talking about the creative act as this kind of beautiful struggle. And I keep coming back to that. Well, if I take a step out of that and just think about that, well, the client is also having a struggle too. Maybe I can meet them there. You know, Maybe I can meet them there and say, hey, I'm in this with you. I want to help you, and we're going to climb this mountain together. And that becomes a theme um, that we can use in our external branding and kind of something we can build a story around where we have this unique perspective on things that's got a little bit of danger to it, but also a little bit of love. <clears throat> um, now, at this point, this sounds kind of like the 10-year-old is the star of the show. And that's, I mean, it's kind of true. They are. But um, the kid inside you would be absolutely lost without the professional. That's right. So that's. That good stuff, the deep voice, that's the 10-year-old speaking. But we also need the professional. And the professional is like the parent. They're like the grown-up in this creative dynamic. And they're in charge of things like uh, the structure of your day, deadlines, critical thinking, 
Um, they play well with others. They know that everybody else at work has the 10-year-old kid too, and that sometimes that can make relationships at work difficult. Um, the professional looks out for the kid. They know when it's time to take a break uh, or just go home. The professional also knows how to politely say no to procrastination. And it also keeps you from eating your feelings. <laughs> and now we're talking about this dynamic between the 10-year-old and the pro professional in its ideal state. Uh, we're talking about how they relate. But in reality, everybody has some confusion about when the pro needs to be in charge and when to hand the reins to the 10-year-old. Um, and this is a lifelong challenge. But if you know this, it's a really powerful thing. Um, so you know, if you know that this is the work you have before you, you even create a website or you start to create your product or whatever, if you know that the ultimate creative act is kind of psychological between these two things, um, then this, I think, changes fundamentally how you approach the work. You start to see the whole playing field, not just the to-do list for, for that day. And this feeling is revolutionary. And does it make brands ultimately sound more human? If you understand this process and kind of engage it on both sides, you're damn right it does. Because you can't sound human without being human. <clears throat> to be human, you got to bring these two sides together. That's super deep, dude. Thanks. You're welcome. OK, uh, so we're coming to the end of our time here real quickly. Um, when we started talking about how to end our talk, uh, our boss Josh was like, hey, what if we did um, some kind of thing about the 10-year-old? Like, how, could, how would the 10-year-old end this? Maybe we could have the 10-year-old take control here. And me and Evan were both like, I don't know. That sounds like I would get super vulnerable again. Sounds like a lot of work. A lot yeah. of work. And uh, we uh, ended up losing that argument. So up next, we're going to show you guys is uh, Josh's journal on how to end this thing. <laughs> right. So I'm going to read Josh's journal. <sighs> OK, guys, we need to think of an ending for our presentation. We want them to love us. We want them to think of us when they hire a creative studio. We want them to think we are interesting, valuable people. And, but we also want to do it our way. And we've got to put our 10-year-olds in charge. Oh. Wait. I'm not going to screw it up. One second. <laughs> Reversal. You thought we were going to screw it up. <laughs> Wait. OK. Go for it. We'll start with music that brings us into a string, like James Cameron film. Some, somewhere a helicopter flies. Right. And in that moment, that is when you say it. Uh, so Ray's or Josh's deep voice is super deep in this instance <laughs> and really, really I don't, earnest. He, he I don't know if we actually, like, actually want us to say we that. We probably shouldn't actually say that. Okay. Okay. You're the boss. What? Dude, that was. Thank you. I'm just, there's a little bit more. There's just a little bit more here in his journal. He said, and then you hug. Go on. We'll wait here all day until you hug. Do you want to come over here? Because we should. <laughs> I just got to stay on the slides. OK. Good. It's awkward. <laughs> Your mics are touching. Each other. Everyone is staring at you. And then the skies open up. Uh, somewhere Mitch McConnell. Somewhere Mitch McConnell sheds a single tear, and he was truly moved by it. And now? Having shown the true power of the 10-year-old, we are done with the show. And that's when the audience gives a thunderous applause. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Michelle. I think it's a little bit not quite.
And then it... And there, there it Thank is. Thank you very much. <laughs>